Good day, everyone. How's it going? It's uh, 10.45, so I think it's a good time to start. Thanks a lot for coming along to seeing uh, building banging websites with bricks, paragraphs, and modifiers. Um, before I get into the presentation, I'd, li I'd like to ask you all two questions. And the first one is, of all the time you spend on building a website, how much of that time is actually spent on solving customer needs? How much time are you spending on thinking about what your customer requires and actually implementing that versus the time you spend, you're spending rummaging around in the, the plumbing of Drupal? Uh, and this is a question we'll come back to, uh, to look at later in the presentation. The second one is, once you've developed your website, how responsive is that going to be for future needs? When you've built that site, are you just crystallizing a design that's been developed at the start? Or have you built something, a toolkit, that is going to serve the needs of the editors and the end uh, users of your website? Hello and welcome. My name is Murray Woodman, and I'm a director at Morphed. We're a, a Drupal agency based in Sydney, Australia. I work with this team of uh, Merry developers, and we've been uh, working on a module called the Modifiers uh, module over the last year or so. And we'll be going along and, and having a look at that in detail later in the presentation. But we'll also be looking at the Paragraphs module and the Bricks module, and we'll be able to see how these three modules are able to come together to form a nice little ecosystem for site building. As we've been uh, developing the modifiers module, we really have been thinking of those two questions. How can we build sites more quickly? How can we build them more effectively, consistently, and be basically be delivering them on time and giving editors the flexibility they need to build the, uh, the sites that will serve their, their customers' needs. I'm going to be considering three different kinds of uh, personas in this uh, talk. The first one, of course, is the visitors to your website, the end users. They want to be consuming attractive, information-rich pages which communicate clearly. And of course, on the other side of that equation, you have the editors and the marketers the people who want to be able to author attractive, persuasive pages for the visitors. And in this particular case, we're really focusing on component-driven design and how those components can be used to build those sites. And finally, we're going to concentrate on site builders. And I count myself as a site builder, as I'm sure many of you do. And what we really want to do here is leverage the best that Drupal has to offer. And by that, I mean combining entities, view modes, layouts, and multiply, multi <laughs> modifiers, and bringing them together in a coherent system so that we can serve the needs of, uh, of editors. Before we go in and have a look at these three modules working in unison, I'd like to sort of take a little sort of walk through Drupal history and the different ways that we sort of build uh, websites and different paradigms we have when it comes to layouts and, and placement of uh, items on the page. Uh, the first one is your typical theme where we have theme regions and these regions are, are baked into the theme and basically you know, the design is, is done by placing blocks on the page with visibility rules. This is probably the way we all started uh, building Drupal websites. Uh, it's the, probably the simplest and, and the most effective um, way of doing things. The one downside of it, though, is that these layouts are baked in at the start, and it's very difficult uh, to change those uh, if the needs of the site uh, changes. There is a particular theme that I've got a soft spot for, and it's the Omega-3 theme uh, back in Drupal 7 days. I'm sure you know, quite a many of us uh, you know, feel similarly about it. Um, this, this theme came about when responsive design was um, first becoming popular, and it was able to sort of combine grids and responsive uh, in quite an effective way. But one of the very interesting things about this theme was that it had the concept of zones, and these zones were able to build out different sort of layers 
of, uh, of, of grids effectively. And um, this sort of brought a lot of flexibility to the site builder. Um, no longer were you just constrained to having these fixed regions. Omega-3 was really trying to help you chunk the page out. And um, this approach, we can see that uh, appearing now in, with the layout builder, and we can also see it in the, uh, the, the bricks module as well. So it's interesting to see that concept you know, it was sort of form formulated uh, a while back and now it's becoming more popular. Of course we had, you know, the panelizer and layout plugins, uh, you know, around this time as well. And, uh, you know, panelizer, um, um, well, the layout plugins were amazing, you know. They allowed us to have a wide variety of layouts that we can um, swap in and out. And it really gave the site builder and Thema, uh, you know, a lot of options at their fingertips. We had all kinds of, uh, you know, different designs um, with all these amazing sort of bricks layouts and, you know, there was really a lot of options there. But once again, these layouts were fixed at design time. You could swap them in and out, but, uh, you know, you were not able to change them as the, uh, as the, the site required. Uh, a few years ago, the paragraphs module really started to uh, come to the fore. Um, you know, it's been a, a massive uh, influence on site builders. I'm sure it's, you know, part of uh, your toolkit and, uh, you know, it's an incredibly popular module these days. Um, paragraphs, of course, are not concerned with layouts. It was concerned with, you know, uh, defining components and encapsulating those components uh, so that they could be, serve the needs uh, of editors. There was a whole bunch of, there was a massive sort of uh, sort of community that grew up around paragraphs and, you know, lots of different uh, techniques were experimented with. One of them I, I call edgy paragraphs, but these are these, basically these edge-to-edge -edge designs that you could get with paragraphs. Um, basically, you could remove the container from the paragraph and pop it out to the edge, and that way, you know, the, uh, the paragraph is taking the full width of the page. And of course, this opened up a whole lot of uh, you know, design possibilities because themers could now target and get those really sort of nice, sort of rich um, pages that we expect. Uh, the classy paragraphs module also came out a, a few years ago, and this really augmented that sort of edgy design. You know, you're able to uh, editors were able to put a class onto an individual paragraph and change the way it looked. You could change the colours, the typography, the padding the look and feel, really anything you liked. And it was that one single class being wired into the, the paragraph that made that possible. So in this, this little uh, present you know, example here, oh my goodness, that is just terrible contrast. Oh my God, it's, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm sorry about that. But yeah, the, in the, um, with, with these, uh, with uh, classy paragraphs, you're able to put a class on the, the div and basically affect the way it looked. Um, the, and I'm, this is really bumming me out about the, my contrast there. It's a little bit bright. Um, with, the, with the bricks module, um, what you have now is the, and we will see this in more detail and better contrast later, um, you have the ability to combine layouts and entities onto one page and basically bring these uh, designs to the fore, these layer cake designs going down. So we're able to combine the components that we love with paragraphs, with the layouts, and the bricks module is able to bring all of those together. And we'll be seeing how that works uh, later in the presentation. And finally, we have <laughs> the modifiers module, which basically allows um, presentation, look and feel, to be mapped down into an individual entity. So we're able to use the paragraphs module to provide the components and the modifiers module can come in and basically change different presentational aspects of that. So for example, you could have background images, background videos, different JavaScript effects, different uh, CSS effects. So it's, it's basically a way of injecting the richness of the Drupal theming layer onto an entity in a way that's easy for editors uh, to access. Okay, so let's, let's go through and have a look at each of these components uh, in order. Firstly, the paragraphs module. 
Um, you know, the success of the Paragraphs module really comes down to its flexibility. And, and just taking this quote from the project page, it says, so what's it going to be? Think big. And the Paragraphs module has opened up a, a whole new world for site builders being able to design components to, uh, you know, for editors to be able to use. And really, that is uh, the, the success of it. Um, but the other important thing about Paragraphs is that they're scoped to the node that they're on. Um, when an editor is going in and editing a particular node, they have the paragraphs there and they're operating within the context of that piece of content. On the other hand, other systems such as the Layout Builder and Panels IPE, they're really sort of looking, using blocks, custom blocks in a, with a, which have a global scope. So if you imagine a whole stack of uh, custom blocks, they are living in your sort of blocks library there and you may have hundreds of these on a website. It's actually quite difficult for an editor to understand what all the blocks are, have to retrieve them and find them and place them on the page. Um, you know, about a year ago we went down the, the path of switching over to IPE and, and trying to get that to work in Drupal 8 but you know, frankly the, the editor experience was not so good because it's just hard to manage that many blocks. And so we've switched back to, to paragraphs now as, as a way for you know, editing and maintaining the content uh, on a page. So that's why I think you know, paragraphs are a, a natural fit, definitely, for, uh, for managing your components. This is an example, and thankfully you can almost see that. <laughs> this is an example of um, a page with some paragraphs on it, okay? So we've got uh, some tabs there, we've got some, you know, uh, uh, circle progress um, sort of indicators, we've got a little gallery, and we've also got a high charts graph, okay? So th this is demonstrating the componentized uh, nature of paragraphs. We are using kind of like a traditional sort of layout paradigm here. In this case, this is panelizer with, um, with a sidebar. And we've had to do a little bit of a hack by just saying, hey, here are some sidebar paragraphs, please put them in. So we can see that we're kind of getting some layouts and some components working together here, but it's still in this fixed uh, approach. And basically we're going to take this example and then go on and see how we can extend this with uh, bricks and modifiers. So let's have a look at the bricks module and see how that can, can work with paragraphs. Now, the bricks module sounds like a scary thing. It sounds like a whole new concept. It even may sound like a competitor to other entities such as paragraphs. But really, that is the wrong way to think about it. The BRICS module is a perfect accompaniment to um, paragraphs. It works in unison with it and basically brings uh, you know, layouts and view modes in with the, the power of, of paragraphs and brings them all together. So at the heart of the BRICS module, we're really just talking about a field, the BRICS field. And that BRICS field is just a list of entity references. It's just a very simple relationship in an ordered list heading off to other entities. But in this case, there is a couple of bits of magic. You know, one of the bits of magic is the layout. Uh, so you can see there in um, the, the, you know, the horizontal box there that we're able to select a layout from a list of layout plugins. So this layout is actually a paragraph with a, a bundle called layout. And that bit of magic says to Bricks, hey, go into the, uh, the, the layout plugins, load them up and let the user select one of them. So here we have you know, the, the, the layout plugins being loaded up as a piece of content as a paragraph. Um, secondly, on the left hand side, you can see this drag and drop interface uh, where you're able to move different paragraphs around in a nice sort of compact UI. You can also see that it's nested. So in the case of that layout, that's sort of at position one. And then we've got two um, items underneath it, the images and another layout there. So that is, that's how the, this is um, being put to, uh, together. And finally down the bottom, we have, I've just circled the, the default. That, that's basically showing a view mode. So in this case, we're showing the default view mode. Um, of, of that particular um, paragraph. So what we have here is um, basically what I call bringing the best of Drupal together. We have the components, we have the layouts, 
and we have the view modes, and we've brought them all together in a compact uh, interface. Now, you can do this kind of thing with paragraphs and nested paragraphs um, today, but you know, the UI is not so great. It's quite expansive and it's hard for editors to, to get their head around it. So what we can see here is you know, the UI being much more compact and uh, you know, basically making it easier for people to manage these relationships. So here we are, back at our example. Um, we've just sort of changed the layouts a little bit. It's nothing too fancy, but uh, hopefully you'll get the idea. Down the bottom here, you can see we've got a 50-50 um, layout that we've used and we've dragged um, those two components in underneath it. We have our uh, circle progress indicators in a sort of like a four column thing and up here at the top we've got the high charts and the content in an 8-4. So we've built this page out using three different layouts. One, two, three and we've dropped the different paragraphs in. Now if you were going to do this with pure paragraphs it would actually be quite difficult. Um, one of the approaches I've seen people do is they make these kind of Frankenstein paragraphs where you might say, let's have a high charts content um, sort of arrangement where you're actually building the layout in. But the problem there is you've got one paragraph doing two things and uh, you know, it's, it's not really sort of factored out in a very nice way. Here, when we've got the layouts that are sort of outside, we're able to have much more control about how we place those, uh, those paragraphs into the layout. And, f and finally here, we've just expanded out the, those circle paragraph ones out to, to the edge by you know, sort of busting them out of the, uh, their container. So you can see, uh, you know, we've got quite a lot of flexibility here in, in how, we, uh, how we lay the page out. Let's uh, go in and have a look at the editing interface. I'll talk quickly. But here, here we have uh, the bricks um, field, and you can see we've got uh, the layouts here. Uh, so in this case, it's a, a two-column 8-4 layout up the top. And we're also just going to have a quick look at the view modes. Here's a bunch of standard view modes that we support in our site. I'm now moving items up for the, the top and bottom there, and we're clicking Save. And so when we come back, we can see that the high charts has flicked over to the right-hand side, and we've also reversed the order of those uh, sort of two down the bottom. So that's, that's really you know, the guts of the, the BRICS interface there. It allows a sort of easy dragging and dropping of um, components inside um, the different layouts and also selecting the, um, the view mode as well. Uh, you can also see there in the, in the interface it's got a little spot for CSS classes too. That can be quite handy for, for just dropping uh, classes onto those individual components. So in a sense, that's like a poor man's version of classy paragraphs, uh, if you will. The, the interface is not as polished, but it, it still a, it sort of achieves the same thing. Um, one of, like, the, the BRICS module is currently under, you know, quite a lot of um, development, and new features are being added uh, regularly. Uh, you've seen the support we have there for paragraphs now, um, natively, but BRICS is also supporting dynamic entity references. And this is really cool. Um, when I first heard about the dynamic entity reference module, I thought, awesome, this is a module that you know, solves a problem in Drupal. And you know, for me, the, one of the problems in Drupal is there's a very strong concept of entity types and entity IDs going around as a pair. So you know, if you look at the API, you often see those sort of going around as a pair. And it makes it quite difficult to, um, to combine different entities from different entity types. And the dynamic entity uh, reference module overcomes that problem by extending it and allowing lists of uh, entities from, of various types. So for example, you could have a list, of, a list with nodes and users and taxonomy terms all in one list. Now, this has been a slow burner of a module and I, I think it's awesome to see that this is now being uh, adopted in BRICS. So if we come through and have a look at, at this page, it's a pretty, pretty hard to see, but on, on this one here we have um, paragraph being shown and we've also got the admin user um, being shown here. So this is quite experimental. It's new in the dev branch and it's only been there a couple of weeks. But we can see here that we're actually mixing in users and paragraphs uh, in the same um, layout. And the thing that you know, brings it all together is the, uh, the view modes as well. 
So now that you've seen this, you can start conceiving systems of, of having view modes that are consistent not just within the node, but also across your other content types. So you could have a, a teaser view mode for a user and a teaser view mode for a, a node, and you could put them, you know, arrange them in this way, and you're going to have a, a consistent interface. So I think that's a really exciting thing that we're, you know, breaking down some of the, the barriers there and, and making this system more flexible. Whew. Okay, moving on to modifiers. So as I said, uh, modifiers um, project is, is one I've been working on uh, with the team, uh, you know, for the last year. We've really been driven by, uh, you know, a desire to encapsulate the cool stuff in the Drupal theme layer and make that available to editors in an easy way. So we're not trying to put sort of themers out of a job, but we, we really don't think you should be spending time in the theming layer constantly reinventing the wheel. What we want to do is wrap that up into a little component and allow you to apply that in to entities as you like. So let's just jump straight into it. Here we have the demo. We can see that we've now got a blue background and white writing on that div. And we've just got a, a parallax image down the bottom there. So a fairly sort of simple example, but we're just showing that we can take that page, um, this little demo page, and then sort of trick it out with some presentational um, aspects. So this, this one up there, no change. Here we've got the background color and foreground colors being changed. And here we have um, parallax image being uh, applied. So you can see that we're basically building things up, components, bricks, and modifiers, and they're all building up to, to work together. Jumping into the editing interface now, um, we're going to scroll down. So we've got the bricks that we know and love. And we're going to edit uh, a section here. And we're going to come down, and we can see on this section, this is the one with the parallax image. So we're just going to remove that old image, come along and select a new picture of clouds, right? So we didn't like those old clouds. Let's put some new ones in. And we've basically changed that modifier. And now we're going to, to click Save. And we can see we'll come back and um, you know, the, uh, the display has, has been updated with the, the new picture of clouds, which of course you can't see. But I'm sorry about that, guys. <laughs> Monitor is too bright. Um, so. Uh, but anyway, at least it's accessible, right? We've got nice sort of contrast going on there. <laughs> um, yeah, so you know, basically the modifiers are, are being applied as a field onto those uh, different entities and uh, are then altering it. So how do modifiers work? So now's as good a time as any to explain it, right? Um, and, I, and oftentimes people do ask me just, just what is the, uh, the magic behind them. Um, when we were designing modifiers, initially we did design them so that they were very closely coupled in with entities. But then we took a step back and said, no, that's sort of tying it in too tightly. Let's tie it into a selector. Uh, so with a selector, you can theoretically target any div on a page or any, anywhere where you can select that particular HTML element. Uh, and this, at, a, at its heart, means that modifiers theoretically could be um, applied to the header or the footer or to teaser items or, or whatever. But in this particular demo today, I'm showing you how it, it applies uh, to entities specifically. So, a little bit of code. Um, the magic happens in hook entity view alter, and this hook is fired when an entity is being displayed uh, with a view mode, which is the, the dollar display there. And what happens is this build array gets updated um, with CSS and JavaScript and, and different attributes. So the name of the game here is for us to update that build array with um, data that is present in the modifiers. So this is some cut down code and I'll, I'll just quickly go through so you understand what's happening. Uh, first off we get the entity ID and that is uh, basically the ID of the, the paragraph. And then we'll just make up a little class for that, modifiers ID and then the ID name. So this is the, the handle that we have now for this um, particular element. And we will place this ID on the element so that we can then address it um, via the JavaScript and, and CSS. Um, we load up a modifiers service, and that service will take the modifiers field and basically make a whole stack of little configs. So for each modifier, we've 
applied, we'll get a little nice, beautiful little associative array of, of configuration. We give other modules a chance to alter that. It's like an alter hook there. Um, so other modules can come in and change that array if they like. And then finally, we come down and we actually apply those modifications. So what happens is the, the modifier's object here is processing those modifications and coming up with a whole stack of modifier objects. And then those modifier objects are applied through to um, the particular build array. So breaking that down, it basically means what we're doing is we're assembling all the CSS and the JavaScript and the JavaScript settings and putting it down into that build array. So we're really trying to take everything that that build array has and abstracting it out so that the modifiers can come in and change that. So let's just have a look at a, a concrete example here. Um, we have our parallax background modifier. So it's uh, implementing modifier plugin base. So the modifiers are, are plugins. So you can go out and, and define your own uh, if you like. And uh, in this case, we're really saying, hey, we want these two libraries. Please include those in, one, two, thank you. Um, we want this JavaScript settings array. Let's build that out. Great. And we've also got some CSS in here for a fallback background color. Can you please put that in? So we, we build all those things up. And then we just go off and make a new modification. So we're just sort of gathering together all those, those uh, different properties and making a modification. And at the end of the day, that modification goes through to the, the hook ND view alter and does its magic on the, the build array. So uh, yeah, basically that's the way uh, you know, we've abstracted out uh, modifiers and, and how they're able to, uh, to plug in. I'm just gonna have a quick sip of water. Sorry, guys. Okay, so that all sounds a bit complicated, I know. We've done a lot of the hard work for you and we've also released a modifiers pack um, to help you out. And this um, contrib module um, supports a number of um, you know, modifiers to help you get up and running very quickly. So you can come in, download this, and there'll be a whole lot of sub modules uh, in there and you can enable that. And once you enable it, the config will spring up, the modifier will be there and you can then start using that um, on your own entities. Um, you know, we support like a lot of sort of eye candy kinds of um, uh, backgrounds here. You've just seen colors, images, uh, different gradients, parallax and, and video, right? So th this is a really nice uh, grab bag of, of tools that uh, you know, marketers and editors are gonna really like to use to, to sort of spice up um, their pages. And it really brings a lot of uh, sort of creative uh, ca capacity to, to editors to quickly add this kind of stuff to the page. Um, we've also got another sort of bunch of utils in here for you know, achieving uh, you know, different effects and uh, you can mix and match those uh, as required. So that's the modifiers pack. If you try modifiers, please download the modifiers pack because that's the thing that's going to help you get up and running. All right, let's return back to those first two questions we had at the start of the presentation. Um, you know, the first one was, you know, how much time do you actually spend solving customer problems versus, you know, doing repetitious tasks uh, in the Drupal backend? And, you know, one of the things about the Drupal community is we spend so much time trying to, to automate and make things more, uh, you know, make things faster and more reproducible. And, you know, this is what we've tried to do, uh, you know, with the modifiers module. If you are able to get a nice set of layouts, a nice set of components, a nice set of view modes, and a nice set of modifiers, you can bring them all together and have a system that is insanely flexible and allows you to build sites out very quickly. When we first started building Drupal 8 sites, you know, they were, they were mammoth things, right? You know, we would be there for six months trying to build something custom. Um, Nowadays, now that we've got this sort of toolkit, we're able to build sites out in you know, four or five weeks. Um, and you know, we've really sort of done away with a lot of the, the head scratching and hair pulling that, that can go on when you're doing things from scratch each time. Um, and you know, this has really allowed us to spend more time you know, with the customer and, and trying to work out what they need and how that site is going to be put together to, you know, to answer the, the, the questions and, and their um, demands. Secondly, you know, once a site is delivered, how responsive is it to future needs? 
I think once you have these set of components, you're also not just delivering something that's more flexible, but it is going to be much more uh, you know, predictable and extensible in the future. So, I mean, having that toolkit there for editors means that they're able to mix and match as required, you know, and the, the combinations that they're able to do with, uh, you know, the different view modes and layouts gives them a, a lot of uh, express, you know, expressivity, if that's a word, going forward. And if they have a new feature that they need, you can then evaluate that and say, okay, this is worthwhile, let's put it into the platform, let's uh, encapsulate that into a component, a layout or, or a modifier, and you're improving the system as a whole. So what you're doing as a developer is, you know, giving people a scalable system and you're getting reuse out of your code and, and that can only be a good thing. We've seen where we've come from. Now it's time to have a, a quick look at where we could, uh, you know, possibly be going. Um, you know, when you look at Drupal, uh, you know, these days, I see there's, there's you know, a rapid change going on in Drupal 8. You know, lots of amazing things are being added to Drupal 8 all the time. We have, uh, you know, layouts and we have the, the settings tray. And we've, you know, we've had a lot of um, and sort of developments going on in this area in Drupal core. But I also see, you know, ideas coalescing, you know, from different parts of the ecosystem. Um, we've seen the layout builder using these ideas of sort of stackable layouts. And we're also seeing the bricks module taking this approach as well. So I think that's an idea that, that's really going to, you know, continue to expand. And I can see, you know, lots of little um, sort of layouts, you know, supporting these kind of new ways of, of building um, pages out. I haven't really spoken too much about layout builder uh, in this presentation. That's because at the moment, in my opinion, the layout builder is really sort of targeted at site builders, putting together the blocks for content types, right? It's, it's dealing with the sort of the big picture stuff of what a, a page can look at. What I've been trying to look at here today is the content uh, side of things and focusing on bricks, paragraphs, and modifiers. Now, each one of these three things, they're all implemented as entities. They're treated as content, not config. And it's, they're really living in the world of the editor. Uh, and so I'm really sort of drawing a distinction there on persona, site builders versus editors, but also content versus config. And I, I think it's a conceptual uh, differentiator here that the paragraphs, bricks, and modifiers are all basically content that's living in a, you know, a living, breathing site that's controlled by the editors rather than the site builders. Um, it's, it's been great to see you know, the bricks module bringing together all of these things, breaking down the, the boundaries that have existed um, previously. You know, we've, we've now got dynamic entity references being brought to the fore and layouts sort of working in nicely um, with the components um, that you've built. There's a really cool um, project that I've, I've just recently found out about. Uh, and this is by Stephen Fondenhout. And he's released a proof of concept um, module called Paragraphs Front End UI. Now this, this little animated GIF, it's, it's pretty low res, but I, th I think it, it will give you enough of an idea. Um, the settings tray is available via a contextual uh, link here. So you can see the settings tray opening up and the different properties of the paragraph are being edited in the settings tray. So what we have is we're not editing the content per se, but we're at, at sort of pulling the levers and you know, turning the, the dials here and actually sort of configuring how that thing um, works. But it's still content stored in the paragraph. When it comes time to actually editing the text on the page, that's sort of done over, you know, on, in the left-hand side there. So here we can see this outside-in approach that, that Dries has spoken about being applied not just to configuration, but also uh, content. Now, Stephen says this project is just a proof of concept and it's designed to encourage um, you know, thought and discussion in the Drupal community about what can be possible uh, you know, with interfaces of the future. And I think if you, you know, take the ideas here, it would be quite easy to extend them into the way Bricks uh, applies things and as well as the modifiers. We've seen that the Bricks and modifiers are kind of stuck away a little bit on the, the edit page, but uh, if we're able to use this paradigm, it's really bringing them up and putting them into the hands of editors even more. So let's have a look 
at a possible um, recipe for the future. And really, I mean, this stuff here is, is, is right here today. And we've got the settings tray uh, newly arrived in Drupal. That's providing the outside in experience. And this can be used for config and for content. We've got the layout builder for site builders, uh, you know, building their big sort of global picture things for, for um, handling the, the content types and the, the various view modes. And then we've got the paragraphs, bricks and modifiers sort of combo that's sort of working together uh, on, the, uh, on the content side of things. Uh, you know, I, I spoke positively about the way the Bricks module handles uh, the editing interface on the, the node. It, it provides a really nice sort of compact um, view of the world. But it is also quite technical. I, I think it probably suits uh, you know, the, the technical minded uh, Drupal folks who, who may be using that. But really for editors, having that outside in experience is also going to be uh, you know, a massive uh, sort of positive for them as well. And I think you know, this is a kind of space where there's a lot of stuff happening. I don't know if this is going to be a winning recipe or not, but I, I think it's certainly something that's interesting and it'll be sort of very interesting to see how uh, the contrib space uh, develops here in the future. Um, Tony Starr, Anton, uh, he is the, the author of the, uh, the BRICS module and he will be uh, you know, presenting uh, on Thursday, Living Design Systems for Teams. He will be uh, you know, speaking about a lot of the ideas uh, I've gone into here and applying them to component systems and, and how they can work. And finally, I'll just do a, a quick plug for the, uh, the sprints on Friday. If you guys are around on Friday, please head along to the, the sprints and uh, get involved there. So that's basically it. You know, what I've tried to present to you today is something that's relatively new. The BRICS module really only has about 400 uh, installs. The modifiers module has probably got about 70 or something. This is very sort of early days for these modules, but I think that they, uh, you know, combine, can combine together to form a, a really sort of good ecosystem, combining it in with um, paragraphs and uh, other entities. So, uh, yeah, thank you very much, and uh, thanks for coming along, and I really am interested in your questions. So I don't really know the drill, but there's a microphone up there. So I, you know, I really want to hear some dis discussion. We, we do have um, probably about, well, a, a good 20 minutes if you would like to talk. So yeah, please head on up and, and ask away. Hi. Um, so I'm curious about the example you showed with modifiers. The way that I would normally achieve that would be to add a field on those entities to say, oh, make this a blue background or a white background or change the parallax image. Um, can you say more about why you would choose to use a modifier versus just creating a field for those options? Yeah, well, the, the main thing is the, a modifier is a, is a pluggable, it's pluggable, right? So you can just add a mod one modifier's field and then add multiple modifiers in. So you can add a parallax one, you can add the colors in, and you can basically build out the presentation combining multiple um, modifiers at once. If, if you're just going to do it as fields, just say you had 10 different modifiers, you'd have to have like 10 different sets of fields, right? So, you know, your paragraphs are going to get very complex because you're just adding in all this stuff, basically. So this is just a way to abstract at one level and, uh, and allows you to apply it that way. Gotcha. And so also with fields, you would need to do some custom theming to say what you know, when you add that field, you'd be saying, you'd be providing a class and then creating something in the theme that says what that class does. And it sounds like with modifiers, it, you don't do any custom theming. Is that That's, correct? Y yes and no, 99% okay. yes. You know, like, like all those modifiers you saw there did something quite explicit, like I'm gonna put this image, you know, on that div and that's just the way it is, right? There's no further modification needed. So, um, but you know, of course, you may still want to theme some things. It's not completely doing away with theming, but in, and certainly we try to encapsulate it as best we can. So it is a unit that, that does what it says on the, the tin. Um, I think the concept of classy paragraphs, and, and we've also got another module called Entity Class Formatter, which can apply to any uh, entity in Drupal 8, but applying a class through a dropdown on an entity is an incredibly powerful thing, right? It's much, much simpler 
for an editor to say, hey, I want the, the blue background or the, um, or the red background, for example, rather than having to add a, a modifier in. I, I didn't talk about this, but we've got another module called the look module. It's basically, uh, it's like applying a look and feel to a page and it's possible to define a set of modifiers in a look and you can then wire that into a class. So you could have the, I want my fancy trigons background with white writing um, sort of uh, look and that you can just then select that with a, with a drop down. That, that's like another set step of abstraction I didn't want to go into today, but, but that was, that's the power of being able to define different selectors rather than entities. So you can actually use that approach to style, start styling up the, the header and the footer and, and things like that as well. Just depends how crazy you want to go. But just keeping it simple, yeah, we're just applying the, the modifiers direct to the, the entity. So I think all those background ones, the eye candy ones, they're going to be nice, easy ones to put on but maybe you might have a drop down that handled the padding or something like that, you know, the, mm. how, you, how your theme actually wanted to, to deal with that. So it's just a matter of mixing and matching. And I think having a class selector is still very helpful, um, which, which is different to what modifiers provides. Mm -hmm. And sorry for hugging the mic. Um, one last thing. So do you see the techniques that you've shown as more appropriate for site builders or for content contributors? Because I, I think a little bit of this might get a little overwhelming for yeah. the typical non-technical yeah, yeah, yeah. content contributor. I would contributor. probably say skilled editor, right? An editor yeah, that like wants, more of an yeah, administrator that, level. That's someone who wants to get involved, <laughs> like an old-fashioned producer, I guess. Someone who really wants to kind of understand the system. I'm, I'm not saying, yeah, all, all editors are going to naturally feel at home of going, oh, I'm going to add this modifier in. But that's the way we've tried to build it, right? You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's like, yeah, add that one in. And, and put it on. So, I mean, we're, that's what we're shooting for. But the whole idea is that the site builder and the developer develop the tools that the, the editors can use. And I think with that outside-in approach, it's going to be, if, you know, you can imagine, yeah, edit this paragraph and you see the modifiers just popping up there and you just tweak it and click save and it updates. I mean, that, that is a much more editor-friendly um, approach and that could be something for the future. Yeah, cool, thank you. Thank you. Uh, great talk. Thanks for talking about bricks. Uh, we actually use it very majorly on our site, and we have like the skilled content editors like successfully managing yeah. bricks pages and everything. Uh, I'm kind of curious about your thoughts on using ECK as like entity construction kit as opposed to using paragraphs, uh, mostly because the paragraphs like are kind of inaccessible to to the rest of the site because <laughs> uh, we we found that you could actually go into an ECK entity and edit something yeah. where you're not even on the page? Yeah, yeah, great question. So, I mean, when, when the BRICS module first came out, that was the paradigm. You'd go into ECK, define an, a, you know, uh, an entity type maybe called BRIC or whatever you wanted to call it, and then you'd define your own bundles. And, you know, effectively that was kind of replicating maybe what you had in the custom blocks world or the paragraphs world. So we already had a set of custom blocks that did that. We had a set of paragraphs that did that, it's like, oh no, I don't, I don't want to have to go and, and make another entity. So f for me, it was, it was quite nice to, to see paragraphs um, being supported. But, but I think with this dynamic entity reference that you have now, that does mean that you can mix and match. So if you want a global block, go make a custom block and go and, and still, you know, and then you can just mix and match and, and put that, that one in as well. But um, that's, I, you know, I, I guess it's the both sides of the divide. Is it scoped into the content or is it a global thing? And of course, having reusable blocks can be very helpful as, as well. Yeah, we actually are using ECK and paragraphs with bricks. And yeah. It works seamlessly, so it's really nice. And, and what, why wouldn't you have gone with like a custom block rather than ECK? Uh, we actually are using blocks to show different views. Uh, so we create a view that has a block and then the bricks page can show that view output yeah, yeah, as well. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. We it's really flexible. I like yeah, it. Yeah, we got a dodgy one like that. Yeah, the old, the old view paragraph or whatever. Yeah, to allow you to, to pull that stuff in. Yeah, so, but you know, yeah, you're going to have little edge cases. Yeah, I mean, views aren't entities that you can put in. So sometimes you need a little bit of glue like that to, yep. to get those working. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, cool. You pointed to this a little bit at the end, um, so if, if you want your answer to be go to the session later in the week and find out there, that's okay. Um, but I was just wondering your thoughts on how this 
fits into like component-based design through Pattern Lab or KSS or those sorts of um, like mapping specific components of specific specific designs. Yeah, I mean Tony Star may be talking about that that later in, in the week. I'm not really sure, but I, I guess that was really coming down to how you want to model that in your paragraph mm -hmm. and uh, when that paragraph is being rendered out, what template you're going to use and what libraries you're going to, to pull in there, I guess, right? So, uh, you right. know, I think the paragraphs will give you that flexibility to define the the HTML and CSS. So on, the, yep. so on the back end, it doesn't add any complexity to the paragraph templates that you No, would no, no, we're, okay. we're just trying to avoid that at all. There's, I didn't really touch on it there, but there's a one field called field modifiers that you put onto the paragraph and that, mm. that basically pulls it, it gotcha. all in. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool, thanks. Uh, hi. Um, hi. In your example um, with Bricks, you were kind of going through this quickly, so I didn't really pick up um, where the paragraphs were in there, and uh, with, were you actually editing a node, and the Bricks is the interface to add paragraphs? Yeah. And, <laughs> or are the paragraphs sure. edited separately and then referenced in the Bricks interface? Let's just see. That's going to come up. So. I mean, what are we on here? This is the this is the full blown one. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, this is a node, and this is a bricks field. We call them content components. But essentially, you're looking at paragraphs here. Each one of these things is a paragraph. So the uh, this um, layout one, this is a special paragraph type with a bundle called layout and. So in the Bricks logic, it goes, oh, if I see a, a bundle called layout, I'm going to go in and provide that little drop down with all the, the layouts that are provided by the, the layout sort of plug-in system. So that's a little bit of magic there where it's, uh, it's pulling um, that thing in. Um, but what this field is doing is it's, it's, it's got the entity, it's, a list, it's an entity reference list of entities, but it's adding the indent, it's, um, it's handling uh, a layout if that's been selected, it's got some some uh, CS, sorry, a class, a class in there as well, and it's basically you know bringing those those things uh, together into the field. So there's more data wrapped up in the field. That that's really where this configuration is being stored. So it's still the paragraphs that are that they're still themselves. You know we're not changing those. It's just basically adding a bit more data in in on the field level as to how they're arranged. Okay, so you could get this similar effect with. The paragraph field it's just each paragraph holds that that's like, right you have a that's two right. column paragraph yeah yeah that's yeah. in the paragraph and rather than yeah and we've, a brick we've field. been down that path before and it's exactly the same i mean it's it's, it's not it's not uh, it's not terribly different you could easily have a layout paragraph yourself and have a a drop down and then that class with classy paragraphs or whatever gets dropped on and then in in your theme layer you say oh every item gets, you know, you extend in some grid or something and target that, that class, right? So that, that pattern, we've done that with um, paragraphs before, but the, the problem is there, it's, it's just like the UI, it's just a bit too spaced out and like the nesting, the nesting of paragraphs can get a little bit <laughs> crazy sometimes, yeah. Okay, and then um, one other question with, the, with Bricks, the layout options that are being presented here, are those definable per node type? Um, That's a good so question. So that editors I've, can be limited uh, to um, it, this sort is, of an This is mega set. mate. Yeah, this is everything. So I, I just think we, we've got yeah we've got the full enchilada in, in here. We've we've actually defined our own little um, module called you know, Bricks Layouts, um, and so we. We've basically defined our own set, and that's that's what we uh, use here. So, but yeah, you can see in this list we've got, you know, we support view mode layouts and um, page layouts, and you, you know, so we, we've got all these. But these we, we use these ones for the pages, um, and we use these ones for the bricks. But they, these are sort of like layer cake design ones, mm -hmm. so they're not these monolithic ones with many steps. It's just like one column, two column, three column, equal columns. You know, that that's the kind of paradigm you, you're talking about here with. Um, with these, so we've done all these with Bootstrap, and then the equal column is just like a flexbox um, thing to, to uh, so it's okay. So that's, that's potentially when setting up a site, that is potentially scopable to 
a constrained set. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not. Design. I'm not really fully on top of that. I, you okay. know, but I, but I do believe there are attempts to have libraries of layouts and and define them in different cases. But I, yeah, my knowledge is a bit lacking on on that. At the moment, it's just all the all the layouts that are there. Thanks. Yeah. Hello, and thank you for your talk. Um, I was hoping you can help me by zooming out just a little bit on. Uh, no, not on the screen, just zooming out in general on yeah. thinking about page assembly in Drupal. Yeah. Um, it's a basic question, I apologize. But in Drupal 7, I think there was a lot of competing page assembly strategies. Like uh, you were there like blocks and context person or panelizer IPE or display suite. And some people use beans. Uh, yeah. There seems like there's a lot of different options for traveling down that road. And so I'm trying to get an idea of how this fits in the, the overall scheme of how people are doing Drupal 8. Are there, uh, what, is, what does this compete with? And if, I'm, if I say hello to this, what am I saying goodbye to? Well, you know, we're, we're, we're quite open to a lot of things. I'm quite promiscuous when it comes to the <laughs> techniques, right? So, um, so we, you know, we use Display Suite for our little view modes and we use Panelizer for the, the content types. You know, that's just how we like to work with it. And that, that's, the, that's the paradigm that we've used all the way back from Drupal 7. We're just still doing it in Drupal 8. Okay. We love paragraphs, we're still using paragraphs, right? So we haven't really said goodbye to any of those things. You know, we use beans as well. You know, the, a previous uh, question before was about how can you reuse blocks? Well, of course, you know, beans were the equivalent of custom blocks now, and they're very, very handy in some cases. So yeah, we're still using those uh, as well, you know? So um, I'll, I'll just tell you one of the, the crazier things we're doing now is that just say you've got a, a complex footer, right? And it's got, it's got all these weird layouts. Now, usually in a theme layer, you're going to maybe have like four postscript areas and a little footer, and you kind of cobble it together and hope that that works. But then what happens if you come up with a design that's <laughs> got, you know, like four layers of stuff and it's got to be two grid instead of four? What we do now is we define one region in the theme. We call it nad Nadia. It's just at the, at the right at the very bottom, and it's just an edge-to-edge -edge div. Uh, region. And then we've got this block, and we just call it the Nadir block, it's a custom block, and that basically has bricks in it, and then we can just build out the whole footer with bricks, and then we just take that block and put it into the theme region. And so suddenly now, with this toolkit, we've got a way to build out insane blocks, and we can put all the modifiers on it, and you know, so we're, we're just basically building out that whole footer, footer region in a really flexible way. And so we're, we're using this on, on distros. Like, just say we have a distro and we're trying to support 20 marketing sites. Like, each marketing site is different, awesome. And they've all got their own weird footer way. But, you know, we're able to kind of use this system to, you know, basically put it together in config without having to, to break out into the theme and define new, new, new layouts. I was, I was just going off on a bit of a tangent there. But yeah, I was just going to try and say, yeah, you can kind of put this stuff together in interesting ways to overcome, uh, you know, some of the... The problems. I mean, what, one of the design goals we've had is really to try to not touch the theme layer, um, and and that is to have basically a style guide driven, uh, you know, development that's that's pro providing you know the basic typography and stuff. But we're really trying to let the content and the modifiers tell the story, and that's the way we're trying to build build sites now. And so, with that in mind, we're able to really we have you know been building sites with this approach where we're not really touching. The theme, or if we do, it's only to solve some something really specific. Um, what what are you giving up? Well, I mean, there's, I mean, the, the the context paradigm in Drupal seven, you know, that's you know that's it's, it's different. Right? Like we're we're at the moment living in the world of of panelizer and and still defining um, the placement, you know, according to content type in in that way. Um, but yeah, you, you know, you're just finding your way. I mean, you know, bricks is a new thing for us, but you know, I just really loved it as soon as I saw it because it was all still working with entities and it was just fitting nicely, you know, together. So I, I just think you've got to experiment. I, I don't really know how it's all going to wind up, you know, but Bricks for me has a lot of promise, but, you know, there's a lot of change sort of going on in the ecosystem as well. So it'd be interesting to see, yeah, what happens. So it's just briefly, um, you had mentioned uh, earlier about a winning recipe. And so if you adopt kind of a strategy and you're like, ah, I don't, this isn't, the community isn't really yeah. picking up steam on this, have you had problems in the past, like going back to your 20 sites and, well, oh, this one did some <laughs> other kind of strategy and this one used this page assembly Man, strategy. I'm doing that every week. Oh, maybe. you're doing we're, that, okay. We're, we're pretty adept at writing scripts and moving paragraphs around between all these different systems. No, but 
Um, if, if you invest a lot of time in your paragraphs, they, they're still going to stay as components, right? So if, if these layout systems, you know, change, I mean, all that investment you've kind of put into those paragraphs, is, you know, is, is not going away. They, they haven't been deleted or anything. You know, they're still existing on that, that node. So, you know, I, you know, obviously this is a, you're buying into the, the paradigm when you, you get into it, yeah. but it's not, it's not the end of the, the world if, if things have to change, I think, because you've still got the, your content there and, and that's the main thing. Excellent, thank you. Okay. Hi, thanks. I really enjoyed the, the talk. Um, you talked at the end a little bit about the uh, layout builders and I was wondering how you see this integrating with that because the example that you kind of showed several times, that could easily have been built with layout builders instead. Um, how do you pick which one? Is it just whichever one you think the content editors will be more uh, taken with, or what's the strategy? Yeah, there? now, like, I, I don't want to be someone doing pronouncements on, on Layout Builder. You know, the settings tray is, is awesome, and the, the, the visual aspect of it is, is really cool. But I think the distinction I was trying to draw there is the, the, um, the, the node-specific nature of, of paragraphs, and that that's really being treated as content. Whereas layout builder is, is like panels, you know, panels in core, it's IPE, it's, it's all these big block things. You're adding, you know, um, views, fields, and, and blocks. You know, that, that's, that's the kind of thing you're dealing with. And, you know, our experiences with IPE in the past means you have this massive library of blocks, right? So if you want to do a landing page with 20 sections, well, you go into your custom blocks and you make your 20 custom blocks, you give them a specific name like front page, top, front page, you know, and then you're trying to go in and go, oh, where's front page, top, there it is, okay, I'm going to drag it there. That's just, you're trying to get that content from a global namespace into the, the page and that, you know, that's why I'm sort of a proponent of um, paragraphs that it's existing in there. So, I mean, I don't really know what's going to go on with layout builder and paragraphs. Mm -hmm. I've, I've been told by a core developer that, you know, they're looking at trying to integrate um, paragraphs in and that's on the, the roadmap. I mean, that's just hearsay. Um, but, but as we've seen from that, that um, paragraphs front end proof of concept that um, Stephen Fondenhout did, that, you know, we've got that interface with the settings tray that's there to, to manipulate the, the paragraphs in the same way. So, you know, I'd say concentrate on the UI and the editor experience, maybe not the the layout builder side of it, you know. But that, that's just my opinion at, at the moment. But, you know, when we're building pages, we're still really sticking with Panelizer for now. I'm waiting for that to become a bit more mature. But, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not dissing out on it at all. It's still, you know, amazing uh, initiative. But that, that's the, yeah, the, the system we're using at the moment. Is it too simplistic to say that that is more for, like, one-off pages, whereas layout builder would be more for this class of yeah, that's, that's, that's it, it exactly. You know, so going back to Panelizer, you know, like you, you could define your, um, your, your layout for a particular content type and capture that in config, but as soon as you came down to the node level thing and did an override, that was kind of, you know, content. So you, you can do node overrides with this and you can do that, but it's, um, you know, it's, you're not operating on that global level right. anymore. So you can do it, but I just haven't had good experiences with it. So, uh, yeah, that's why I'm going that way. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, questions. I love the questions. Now, three minutes. Any final ones, guys? All right. Don't forget to, uh, Anton's talk coming up on Thursday. And thank you very much. Now relax, Kayla. <laughs> Months of stress, it's all gone. Okay. All right. Um, so I was really hoping that we could do this with one content type. So I'm really interested in how maybe bricks and modifiers, especially, would fit into here. So we have. What we're, 
basically be three different looks for what is hopefully the same content type of page. So we have this, um, what they're calling a level one page, mm -hmm. and this is kind of like what the top level page for each thing would be, and it's basically like this full page, and then the only thing that they'd really be editing here is mm -hmm. this, and then whatever appears here. Mm -hmm. And then the rest is this. This would just be blocks, you know? Um, Sorry, I just, That's right. is it okay yeah, if yeah, I watch? Yeah. Oh, yeah, you want to watch? Yeah, sure. Because I'm 